Um, so the first thing in the announcements I wanted to bring up, um, there is a section about greeting cards for the house down in Cheyenne. I just wanted to remind everyone that those are there. Um, and the ones that are in, in a house down, they would love to get cards from everyone. The last one on the list has terminal cancer, and his family has reached out to me and asked if we could add that on to the uh, prayer list and, um, and on our house, house down list. So if you can, please drop a card to these folks. They would love to hear from you. Next on the list is uh, we are collecting school supplies, and the deadline is August 4th. Um, Julie, I, I know you're just standing, I'm sorry, but um, are you reassessing those to see what we need now, or you just want to bring well, them? I think we'll just bring in what you want to bring in, and we will fill the baskets, <coughs> and Terry um, Stout has, has got more baskets for them, so I'm going to pick those up tomorrow. And then what we have over above stuff, we will hold off, and then in January, we will replenish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this year, we'll be able to use extra supplies.
here. We believe in one God, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was a part of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and received that right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Creed, 
which if you do a little history, uh, goes back to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. So a very old creed, but a very scripturally solid creed of our faith. We're so blessed to be able to be in worship today. And before we go to um, our time of confession, and the reason we have a time of confession, brothers and sisters, is that none of us wants to go before the Lord. If there's something pressing on our hearts, some grudge, some sin, some something, we need in order to be fully connected spiritually to have an opportunity to confess those things that are not of God. And so that's why we do those things. So I invite you now, if you would, as we share together in the prayer of confession, then there's a time of silence, and then there is a scriptural assurance of pardon. And today, the scriptural assurance comes from the book of Jude. Now, if you're familiar with the book of Jude, it only has one chapter. It's a very short book in the Bible, but a very powerful one. So I invite you now in a spirit of confession to join me in our prayer. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have often forgotten that our life is from you and your forgiveness and love through your Son, Jesus Christ, is the greatest gift we can ever receive. We are saved by grace through faith. Forgive us of our sins and let us be acceptable unto your kingdom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And now would you pray silently. Father God, thank you for this time of confession. And as it says in Jude verses 21 and 22, keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life and have mercy on some who are wavering. Amen. As we look to our time of prayer, one joy that I wanted to share is that Alyssa, who is with us today, was baptized last Sunday into the faith. Amen. Amen. We're thankful that you are with us. We're also thankful for all of you to be here. And I did want to say that, Julie, I we did work it out for Brian to do the reading. I just didn't tell Dusty in time to get into the book. <laughs> so Brian will be sharing the gospel reading a little bit later. Prayer concerns today that we want to lift up. We do want to continue to <clears throat> remember Ronald and Nancy as Ronald continues having difficulty walking. Are there any others today? I know we've got some unspoken concerns. If there are no others, then would you bow your heads in faith as we go to our Heavenly Father? Almighty and everlasting God, Indeed, you are our all in all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, has brought light into this world, a light so bright that darkness can never overcome it, a light that today illuminates heaven, and one day we shall see and glory in the brightness thereof, and also the peace and the love and the power and presence of you, Almighty God. And so now, Father, for the living of these days, we pray for all this day that are struggling. We lift up the condition of our world. We pray for our nation. 
We pray for our state and for our community. And Lord, we also especially remember today our soldiers that are in harm's way. And we pray, Lord, for peace, for peace in Israel and Gaza, for peace in the Ukraine. And Lord, as your people, today we pray for all of those who are struggling, for all of those that we name in our hearts before you now, Thank you, O oh God, for hearing our concerns. And Lord, you know also our own needs and our brokenness. And as we pray for that, Father, we also lift up the many names on the back of our bulletin. All of those, O oh God, who are struggling. We lift up Ronald and Nancy Stainback. And Father, we pray for all whose hearts are broken today by the loss of a loved one lives that have been lost in tragic ways. And we pray for your comfort and peace. Father, we pray for all that have stumbled and strayed away from your love. And Lord, sustain us now that our strength and our courage, that our commitment to you may not fail but rather grow stronger day by day as we seek to love you and to follow your will. Remind us that what happens to us in this life cannot even hold a candle to the love and the presence and the power that we will know in eternity. And Father, as we pray this today, we pray in the name of our living Savior, Jesus Christ, as he shared, and so we pray together. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn, and I invite you to stand, he leadeth me a blessed call.
sisters, as part of our offering to God, I'm going to ask if Billy will come forward as our usher, but our sharing in number 174, his name is one.
26. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who, <clears throat> who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to, the, to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up the shepherds, I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. And they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, <clears throat> says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And he shall reign as king, and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be named, <clears throat> will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name of, by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. <clears throat> this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And since you didn't tell on yourselves, I'm going to tell on you. Steve and Tina had a wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else had an anniversary this week?
to, to tell you something else. Did you know that God never sleeps? Had you ever thought about that? He never sleeps. He's always watching. The shepherd is always looking after the sheep. So don't ever think that you are alone because you're not. Because the shepherd loves you, cares about you, and wants the best for you. And that's God. That's the image of the shepherd. So let's have a prayer together before we go back to your seat. Pray with me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you. Thank you. For being our shepherd. For being our shepherd. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for coming up. And Mr. Brian.
He slams on brakes, backs up, and he jumps out of the car and he goes around the car and there's this young boy standing there. And he starts yelling at him. He said, what'd you do that for? Look at my car. Passenger side's got a nasty dent in it. That's gonna cost a lot of money. What'd you do that for? And he wants to grab him and just shake him. This young boy looks up at him and his chin starts quivering. He said, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know what else to do. Nobody would stop, so I threw a brick. And with tears streaming down his face, he points at a younger child on the ground between two cars. That's my brother. He rolled off the curb and fell out of his wheelchair. I can't lift him. Mom's at work and I'm supposed to be watching him. Could you please help me get him into his wheelchair? He's hurt and he's too heavy for me to lift. Oh. This young man moved beyond words, hurriedly lifts the handicapped child back into his wheelchair. He sees that the scrapes and the cup cuts when he pulls out his handkerchief and kind of dabs him that, you know, some soap and some water and it'll be okay. The young boy looks up at him and says, thank you, sir. God bless you for helping me. The man is too shaken up to say a word. And he watches this young boy as he pushes his little brother in his wheelchair on down the street back to the house where they lived. He looked at the side of his car, gets in and drives off and decides right then and there that he's not gonna get that dent fixed for a long time. Brothers and sisters, how did we get so busy that sometimes it takes somebody throwing a brick at us to get our attention? How does that happen? You see, as God's people, we're to have two phases in our life. The first phase as a Christian is when we are going into the presence of God through prayer and quiet time and worship. And the second phase is when we are coming out of the presence of God in communion with Him steadily to be in the world and around other people. So we're either going into the presence of God or be, we're being around people when we are coming out of the presence of God. We worship, we pray, we rest in God because we need it. Oh, mercy, do we need it. And not only do we need it, it's how we get ready to do God's work, to be in service to him. After Jesus spent time in a deserted place, if you look back in Mark chapter 1, this is where Jesus is telling the disciples they need to go. But if you look in Mark chapter 1, Jesus has already given the example. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus has been tempted in the wilderness. He's heard about John being arrested, and he knows what's going to happen. He's been calling the disciples. He's been teaching in the synagogue. He's healed in the synagogue, and he has healed Peter's mother-in-law and numerous others. He's been busy. And then verse 35 of chapter 1 says, While it was still dark, Jesus 
got up and went to a lowly place, and there he prayed. If God's Son in human form knows that he needs that time alone, that time in prayer, that time to be in communion with the Father, how much more do we need it? It's how we have the strength. It's how we have the strength. In those four verses there, verses 30 to 34, comes after the time that all those disciples, they've been casting out demons. They've been healing in the name of Jesus. They're all excited. They've had the power from God to do this. But Jesus recognizing that in our human weakness, we still, especially, need that recharging. And so he says to them, come away to a deserted place by yourselves and rest a while. Rest for your soul is what Jesus is speaking of. As someone once said, you know, if the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. If the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. In other words, he'll catch you up in all this stuff that you think you have absolutely got to be doing. And then before you know it, your tank's on empty. And you're biting and snapping at people. You're hard to live with. And it's not, it's not the example that we should be projecting to the world of who and what a Christian is. Because we run out of gas. We worn ourselves out. And all the while, Jesus is saying, come away to a lonely place, to a deserted place, all by yourselves and rest a while. You know, when we get too busy, our priorities get all messed up and mixed up. I had someone tell me one time, they were too busy to go to church. They were too busy to worship. Now, brothers and sisters, we, we can't always say what we would like to say. All I could think of to say that would have been correct, politically correct to say was, wow. What I wanted to say was, when death comes, will you be too busy to die? You see, if the devil can't cause us to sin, he'll cause us to be too busy. Too busy to recharge our spiritual batteries. Too busy to spend time in rest and alone with God. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is a reflection of that from the scripture today. To come away to a deserted place and rest. Recharge your batteries because God is in control. Not us. God's in control. And when we let him be in control, when we take the time to worship and to pray and to rest. Then God can use us in whatever talents he's given us. You know, it's a temptation, isn't it? To look at all of the problems that we have and be overcome by despair. And all this, the good shepherd says to Hit the pause button 
and trust me. Would you bow your heads? Oh Lord, there's not a one of us in here that hasn't just been overcome, overstressed, and yet we know, we know, Lord, where our strength comes from. We know, Lord, where your power and presence lies that we need that recharge. We need that time with you. We need to worship and to pray and to spend time alone with you. For, oh God, so many times we hear people say, God doesn't give us more than we can handle. But it is more than we can handle without your presence, without your power, without that time alone. Oh, Lord, we hear you today. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, and it's say it like you mean it, if it's true. It is well with my soul. Number 377, I remind you the altar is open as we stand to sing together. <laughs>